Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're going to look at a solid cylinder rolling down an incline and we will have to take into account the moment of inertia, which means we'll end up with two equations. One equation where we have to solve the torque being equal to I times alpha, which is the rotational equivalent to F equals MA. The reason why this equation by itself can no longer solve this problem is because we have a rotating object that has moment of inertia. The torque is caused by the friction between the surface and the rolling cylinder. So let's look at all the forces acting on this object. We have the mg acting straight down. That's the weight of the, of the object, the cylinder. We have the component parallel to the surface, which is mg sine of theta. And then we have the perpendicular component. We have the mg cosine of theta which causes a normal force from the surface to act back, which is this way right there. This is the normal force, which is also equal to mg times the cosine of theta, which then causes the friction force to act in this direction. Force friction is equal to the normal force times mu, which is the coefficient of friction. And in this case, it will be the static coefficient of friction because there's no movement between the surface of the cylinder and the surface of the inclined plane. It's simply rolling over it, simply making contact, momentary contact, but not sliding over one another. That means that the force friction, the friction force, is equal to mg cosine theta times mu. Now, without the friction force, the, the cylinder would simply slide down the incline, and that's how we've been looking at the problems before. In this case, it's going to be rolling down the incline, and it's the friction force that causes the torque on the cylinder. That means, when we look at this here, we can say that the torque is caused by the friction force, force friction, multiplied times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of force to the point of rotation, which is the center of the disk, which is distance r away from where the force acts. So it's the friction force times r is equal to the moment of inertia. Since it's a solid cylinder, it's one half, the mass times the radius squared. And then we have to write the alpha, the angular acceleration, and we know that the tangential acceleration is equal to r times the angular acceleration, or the angular acceleration is equal to a divided by r. So instead of writing alpha, we write a divided by r. A would then be the acceleration down the incline, which is, after all, what we're looking for. A is equal to question mark is the ultimate question here. How fast is the disk rolling down the incline? Notice we have an r here and we have an r squared there, so that cancels out. We have an r in the numerator, an r in the denominator. That cancels out, so we're left with the friction force is equal to 1 half the mass times acceleration. And then if we plug, down, plug in what the friction force is equal to, we can say that mg times the cosine of theta times mu is equal to 1 half m times a. And since we have an m on both sides, that cancels out. We can say that g cosine of theta times mu equals 1 half times acceleration. In the same way, we can also look at F equals MA. Along the incline, we can say that all the forces aiding the acceleration minus all the forces opposing the acceleration equal the mass times acceleration. Mg sine theta is aiding the acceleration. The friction force is opposing the acceleration, which means that here we can write Mg sine of theta minus Mg cosine of theta times mu equals the mass times acceleration. Again, in that equation, we can see that every term has an m in it. We can then simplify that by eliminating the m from every term. We can write that g sine of theta minus g cosine of theta times mu equals acceleration. Now, since we're looking for the acceleration and we have a second unknown, the coefficient of friction, we can eliminate the coefficient of friction by solving the coefficient of friction in one of the equations in terms of the other one. So what we can probably do here is it would be easier to solve this equation for the coefficient of friction and plug that in here and then solve for a. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's try it that way. We can say that mu is equal to a divided by 2g cosine of theta. If we then take this result and plug it in mu over here, then this becomes 
g sine of theta minus g cosine of theta and instead of mu we'll write what mu is equal to multiply that times a divided by 2 g cosine of theta and that would then equal a and right away we realize that here we have a cosine of theta in the numerator and a cosine of theta in the denominator that cancels out we have a g in the numerator and a g in the denominator that cancels out the equation then becomes g sine theta minus what's left here is a divided by 2 equals a moving this over to the other side we get g sine of theta is equal to a plus a half a well a plus a half a is three halves a g sine theta equals three over two a and finally multiplying both sides by two thirds and turning the equation around we can say that the acceleration is equal to two thirds g times the sine of theta and that's the ultimate answer you can see here that it's affected by the incline the steeper the incline the fast acceleration the less steep the incline the less great the acceleration it also depends on mu but then of course mu is simply a catalyst to the acceleration by causing the object to spin around by giving it a torque which causes the angle of acceleration and that's how we solve a rolling object down an incline such as a solid cylinder later on we'll do an example where there's a limit as to how much friction force the coefficient of friction can produce and so there will be a limit as to how steep the object can, or the incline can be before it stops rolling and actually begins to slip but that's for another problem which will come later in the series that's how it's done